Hey, Gordon, this is Mark D'Amico with Celtics.com. I figure I might as well jump in and ask you the first question. Um, I'm just curious, you know, obviously this is a lot more time that you get to spend with your kids and your wife um, in the middle of a season. How are you guys taking advantage of that as a family um, and maybe doing some things that you wouldn't typically be able to do with them on a daily basis? Uh, I mean, yes, it is a lot of time with the family here then and, you know, no, no road trips or leaving to go to basketball. And um, I think just being able to be with them more um, and really take advantage of that time. We haven't done necessarily too much different. Um, we've just done more of everything. Uh, you know, so when it's nice out, we've been trying to get them outside, going on walks with the dog, trying to get the girls to learn to ride their bikes without training wheels. That's not going too too great right now, um, but I'm going to keep trying at that. But you know, just really just spending more time with them, just just more of everything. Awesome. Hope you guys. Hey Gordon. Well. Hey Gordon. This is Sherrod Blakely. Quick question for you. Uh, when you guys came back from Milwaukee and there was a lot of uncertainty about just everything, can you take us through what that period of time like was for you and your family with your wife and the kids and, and another one on the way, and just how were you able to kind of navigate that, that period of time? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone was a little bit scared at that point in time just because of the uncertainty and not knowing exactly what's going on, and also because we had played the Jazz and – and he was somebody that had tested, Rudy was somebody that had tested positive. Um, just with my wife being pregnant, she, we were definitely a little nervous about the whole thing and, you know, definitely didn't want to let her get the, I mean, anybody, but specifically her get the get the virus because of, of the baby, and, and we didn't know what could exactly happen with that. So we were just very precautious with everything, and um, you know, maybe I, I didn't go anywhere or isolate myself or anything besides just being at the house, but I did, We, you know, do, our doctor said probably not as many hugs, not as many snuggles until we can figure out if I'm, you know, positive or negative, and so that's kind of what we did until, um, you know, we got back the results. Hey, Gordon, Mark Murphy from the Boston Herald. Uh, was it a real... It must have been a relief when you did get back the results and you were negative. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, I think just, um, like I said, because of our situation with Robin being pregnant, it, it was a little nerve-wracking, but certainly a relief um, to um, be negative. And you know, then it was something where, okay, we're all fine as long as we stay in our bubble here and make sure we, you know, make sure we take care of, of everything that we need to take care of to stay safe. Um, and so it, it was it was kind of good to see that. Yeah, Mark Murphy again. Gordon, you have you had a chance to heal up during this time? I mean, I know you had lingering leg issues and so forth. I mean, has there been a benefit to just getting healthy? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one positive from this whole thing is that everyone's been able to recover. I mean, we haven't been able to do much, so hopefully everyone will be healthy whenever and if, if ever we, we get back um, this year. And so the, the only issue is that, like, we haven't really been able to do treatment. So you really just, it's just time that's been healing everything, which is, like I said, a good thing, but sometimes you need a little bit of treatment too. Um, but certainly this, is, this has been good for, I think, everybody's body. Hey, Gordon, it's Mike. Hey, Gordon. This is CLNS Media. I just wanted to ask you uh, the challenge of not only t staying, trying to stay physically fit, as you mentioned, going out for walks and whatnot, but staying mentally fit and emotionally fit. I mean, obviously what the rest of the country, the rest of the world is going through is uh, taking its mental and emotional toll, and I'm wondering how you as a professional athlete um, are going about that. Yeah, I mean, I think you bring up a good point. I think um, phys physically it's one thing, and, you know, I've been, when it's the night out, I've been running outside, and uh, we have a Peloton, so I've been doing the Peloton bike, and I have, uh, the team was able to bring over some weights, so I've, I've done a lot of body weight stuff, and then some dumbbells, and a little bit of kettlebells, as much as I can from the physical side of it. Um, but I think the mental and emotional part is certainly going to be 
something we're all going to have to work through when we get back um, because you just get in this this mode and this mindset when you're in, in the middle of the season and then to just kind of not have that for um, however long a period this is going to be, it's it's going to be an adjustment to get back into that, especially if it, if we get back and it's, you know, almost right into the playoffs. Like you've got to be able to really turn it on there and get, you know, really locked in and focused again. And, um, you know, something that I think that the staff and um, – the coaches for, for us have, have talked to us about a little bit, and, you know, we've done some Zoom calls as a team and, you know, trying to still stay connected. And, and I think that will help us out when we get back. And if I can follow that up, Gordon, just the emotional um, health of you and your family as you're going through this right now, as opposed to just trying to get your emotionally uh, emotional state ready uh, once you get back to basketball, but just getting through the period now, what is that like? Um, I mean, after, you know, for us, you know, finding, finding out that, you know, I didn't have it and that nobody around us has, has it, that's been a relief, like I said. Um, um, I think it's, it's, we have, I think everybody in the world has people that they're connected to that has um, gotten the virus and some people have been put on life support and had to go to the hospital and that's, that's, I mean, that's very sad. It's heartbreaking, and, um, you know, that's kind of why we have reached out and tried to do as much as we can for um, the people here in Boston, some of the community, and with the things that we've done for that. But, um, I mean, I think you certainly for us, we just try to stay safe, um, make sure that we're, you know, protecting ourselves and um, not putting anybody else at risk, and I think that's, I think if everyone tries to do that individually, this thing will be better over the long run. Thanks, Gordon. Gordon, it's, uh, Gordon. Gary Washburn. Gordon, it's Gary Washburn here. Um, kind of on a funny note, not funny for you, but they replayed, obviously, the national championship game, and then I think they had, like, a poll about what would have happened if your shot would have went in. Have you followed any of that? Have people called you? Have you have, I mean, have, have you – did you know that that was kind of going around like a, a poll and a what if about that? And it's been 10 years. I mean, did you, has it seemed like 10 years? I mean, you look completely different now. Uh, right. You know, what's, what's your thoughts on that, that moment, that time? And then obviously with everybody doing all the throwback games now, because there's nothing else to show, like what, 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 did you get a chance to watch the game again? Yeah. So, um, Ronald Nord, who was the point guard on the team, he's now an assistant for Charlotte. He had a he had a big group Zoom call with everybody on that team, and so it was cool for all of us to get on and then talk to each other, just update each other on on where we've all been, what we're doing now, and a lot of those guys I haven't seen since um, that last since I left and came to the NBA. So it was cool to see everybody. Uh, my wife actually hadn't had never. Never watched. She did not watch the game at the time when it went on. She hadn't watched it since, and so she wanted to check it out and, and see the way I looked and how different I was. And um, I think actually, we, when we were watching the game, um, the president's announcement came on with like three minutes left in the game, and then they didn't. When they played it back again, they just it, it had already skipped over to the to the ceremony. So she still hasn't seen the ending or anything like that. Um, but it was certainly it, it did bring back good memories to to watch it and kind of kind of like I said connect with my old team. I haven't seen any of these polls or anything like that, so I, I guess I can't comment on on what people have been saying. But um, it's it's amazing how fast time flies. I mean, my life hasn't stopped since then, um, since since leaving for the NBA. So I really haven't had any time to. Um, reminisce or think about it just because I've constantly been, you know, on to the next thing since then. Um, but 10 years has gone by, certainly, and it's it's uh, something I'll never forget those moments. Hey, Gordon. This is, um, and you, you alluded to uh, some of the things you're doing in the community. Can you touch more on that? And, um, you know, we saw the video of you and Bernie today um, and also saw that you chose to shave. Can you touch on that as well? <laughs> Uh, well, firstly, I was getting 
because I've been home the whole time and we haven't been able to go to the barber or anything, my beard was getting a little scraggly and Robin was getting a little upset being around me all the time. So I just decided there was already a lot of tension going on with being at the house all day with everybody. So just decided to shave it so I could release some of that tension for everybody. Um, but then I think with, with, uh, with uh, Boston Children's, we've, been, we've worked with them since we have uh, came here to Boston. I think it's um, something that Robin and I are both passionate about, and we've also, there's been other um, places we've, we've donated as well. But just specifically with that, we wanted, um, we realize and appreciate so much what the people that are continuing to work and continuing to um, provide support and help for, for people that get sick. Um, we just wanted to show some gratitude to them and and kind of highlight the heroes that they are right now and um robin and i both can attest to getting she she drinks coffee i drink green tea but kind of having your dunking in the morning your your whatever it is you get in the morning those places aren't open sometimes and um we wanted to uh kind of get some people some some gift cards and some duncan so that way they can keep keep going for us hey gordon uh have, when this league does finally get back into action, whenever that may be, have you tried to envision what that's going to look like, where you're going to be, what uh, probably without fans, what that experience is going to be like? Uh, yeah, I've, I've thought about it a little bit, and I think whatever scenario that they come up with, it's going to be um, – something I don't think any of us players have, have dealt with before, whether that's everyone being in Vegas or another location, whether that's, um, like you said, playing with no fans. I think playing with no fans would be would be pretty wild. Um, it just it almost be like a scrimmage at training camp. You have to bring all your own energy, and there's, I mean, home court advantage is, is pretty much thrown out the window at that point in time. Um, and then also just... Um, the playing, I guess, maybe shortened, thinking about playing a shortened playoffs, if that's the case, too, where it's just best of fives or um, maybe less teams or I don't know. I think I don't think anybody really knows, and there's just been a lot of speculation, so it's been hard to envision anything. But I know that whatever it is, it's going to be completely different, and um, and it'll be very interesting to see how it all plays out. How long do you think it would take for a team to get back into the proper shape to actually compete again? Um, I mean, I think it's hard to say exactly, but this has already been, what has it been, I guess almost, what is it, four weeks or a little over four weeks, and um, you know, guys really haven't been able to get on a court or a hoop or anything, and so I think just from a safety standpoint, you need um, – I, I, I mean, I'm not qualified to answer that. We have people on staff that can that could answer that a lot better than me, but I'm, I'm guessing at least two to three weeks of 